Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and at your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, by Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear you truth and love to those in need, 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from Ezekiel 17, verses 22 to 24. Here the tree imagery is used in a messianic prophecy to tell how the Lord will choose someone from Judah's royal family, the cedar tree, to reign over all creation. This tree will be planted on Mount Zion, the location of the holy temple. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of the young twigs. 
I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live in, in the shade of its branches, will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Word of God, word of life. Yes. Thanks be to God. Join with me in the Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name almost high, to herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. On the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age they shall be green and succulent, that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no injustice. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 17. Paul encourages believers to live by faith and not by sight. We do not consider Jesus from a human perspective but through the eyes of faith, believing he died for all and was raised. All who are in Christ and are now in God's new creation. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God, word of life. Thanks.
going to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus frequently uses parables to teach ordinary people as they are able to hear and understand. Images of sowing and growing show the vitality of God's kingdom. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. And when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to him, and they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you notice that all the person did in our gospel was sow the mustard seed? And the seed is so small. The, so the sower did not water or weed. The sower left the seed alone once it had been scattered. The gospel reads, the kingdom of God is like the mustard seed, which is sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The imagery is rich, we can probably make three or four different sermons out of that scripture, actually. But for today, what I wanted to emphasize in the story was the smallness of the seed and how it relates to you and me. We most often do not know when or how we have been an influence on someone in relation to a number of possibilities. We may be an influence in relation to the way we dress, in the way we work, or what we choose as a vocation. We may be an influence in relation to how we act in the store, or with our friends, or with strangers. We are always on notice. And this is what Jesus is telling us today in our gospel. When people see you, do they see me? We may be in a crowd. We may be with a few. We may be by ourselves. You are one person. I am one person. We both are noticeable. What do people see? What do people hear? What has our seed of a person grown into? What have we done? Or what have others done to us to cause us to grow? And grow in what ways? Are we welcoming as the mustard seed grew to be? The kingdom of God, which Jesus is comparing to a mustard seed, is you and me. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. When it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. The kingdom of God is us, not something here, not something there. The kingdom of God is people. The kingdom of God is what we make it to be. It's that simple and that scary. The kingdom of God is like seeds scattered on the ground and the seed sprouts and grows. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds. When it grows, it becomes the greatest of all shrubs. So where is this kingdom of God? It is you and it is me. It is you and me individually 
and it is you and me in the Christian community. In the parable, Jesus tells us that birds come to the shrub because it is welcoming. The shrub does not go to the birds. Is not Jesus telling us that we are on notice and that any moment others may want to join us because of what we have to offer, which is him, which is Jesus. This is the story to us. Jesus is telling us that he is you and me, and that's the only way he can be experienced. The Holy, Sp Holy Spirit moves within each one of us, but Jesus is us, is you and me, and his spirit moves within us to be him to others. And why does the mustard seed grow to become the greatest of all shrubs? Because Jesus is the greatest of all creation. You and I are not the greatest of all creation, but Jesus within us is. And we together, as his followers, become the greatest of all creation, where others are welcomed and joined in sharing the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. Think of it. We are baptized into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have God within us from the start, always there. We, you and I, are God's kingdom.
let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. Let these patterns assure us of your constancy. Merciful God. You raise the lowly and humble those in high regard. Raise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of your people and remove the inclination toward anger and violence. Merciful God. This is our prayer. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises, especially those we name silently or aloud. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Merciful God. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, Bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God, join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With gratitude, we remember the saints who are now at home with you. Plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts, that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God. With grateful hearts, O oh God, we give you thanks for all the fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and godly men who surround us each day. We lift them up in our prayers this that you bless them and keep them in your care. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our help. Through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O oh God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O oh God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me remembering his law for us on the way at the table. And to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit. In our gathering with this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God. Through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
for those at home and those in the pew, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. There are some announcements today. Um, my group of Sunday Education Hour, we will start to talk about the first two chapters of a book who is, which is written like a novel, but we will discover the historical Jesus in the book. So everybody is welcome to join us if you ever wanted to learn more about this person of Jesus in a historical way, you are welcome. It's very fascinating as there are writers who were not Christians writing about him. So just to give you a little bit of a teaser. Then there is Dinner Church coming up on June 26. When you are wondering what Dinner Church is, it is a also modern but also very old actually kind of worship. It's a concept which tries to worship like the first Christians did. So we will combine worship and also having a meal together. Um, it's a Wednesday evening, the sign up sheet is out, so please feel free to sign up or if you have a question, just ask me about it. Um, then we also have other announcements Nina will do for us. Can everybody hear me? No? Can everybody hear me now? Is that better? Okay, I'll talk louder. <laughs> okay. Um, as an interim, the natural progression of things is to take one's lead when a new pastor is called. Miriam is not ordained yet, but as a synod authorized minister, is fully functional in the pastoral role. Therefore, Pastor Scales has decided it is time to take her leave from us at the end of June. She very graciously gave us until the end of summer to get things in order, and now that we are well on our way, uh, it is the logical choice. This is how she wants it to be, and is as it should be. She wants this to be a good, smooth transition for the church, and one we very much need. To say we are grateful for what she has given us is an understatement. Pastor Frieda was appointed to us by the bishop nine years ago as the best person to lead us through what was a difficult time for us. And she was just what we needed. When she came to us, we were in a state of emotional turmoil. We didn't know how we were going to pull through the present or what lie ahead for us as a church. Pastor Frida was a matter of fact, calming presence, letting us find our way while gently guiding and coaching us throughout. She is our pastor, mentor, and friend. On a personal note, I would not be where I am today in my faith journey without her. I'm glad that Pastor Frida will be enjoying her retirement. She very much deserves a respite from the many years of faithful service that she has given the church. We will love her always and miss her terribly. Um, and she's always welcome to visit. I hope she knows this, right? Always welcome to come back and preach. Um, so please join us on June 30th for a time of fellowship and gratitude for Pastor. Um, immediately following the service, we will have a brunch and a time to be together. Thank you.
again for the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys us be upon you now and forever. Amen. You just heard a sermon of my father. That hymn was written by Eugene Bartlett while he was listening to my dad preach. And it's got scales as its name. So praise be to God. Thank you. 
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.